This is the way. Ooh, shiny. Welcome to another review. This one comes courtesy of Micah. Micah, once again, thank you so much for that amazing gift box. You sent so many amazing items that I'm sure I'm going to be taking a look at over several months. And one of them was this beautiful six inch Star Wars figure of the Mandalorian from the Mandalorian on Disney Plus. Really cool looking figure, but I didn't realize just how special this thing was until I went to a toy show in my town just this past weekend. And as I was looking at all of the different six inch Star Wars figures they had, the price of this one jumped out at me. I didn't realize this guy was that much more pricey than the other figures. So uh, since he's more rare than the regular version, I thought I would uh, do a review on it, give you a closer look at it if you're not able to track one down yourself. The regular version is still available at Big Bad Toy Store, but this is the carbonized graphite version. And this was only available at Target. So that would, I assume, make it a United States exclusive since I'm not sure if there are targets elsewhere in the world. We used to have targets here in Canada. Before Target arrived here, we had basically the Canadian version of Target called Zellers. Uh, right down to the color scheme, we had a white and red color scheme for Zellers here. And it was a de department store, very similar to Walmart. Uh, all the Zellers closed down and a lot of them converted into Targets and they put a lot of time and money into a lot of those conversions. And Target went out of business here, seems like pretty quickly. So we have a lot of empty Target buildings here or sometimes they get filled in with uh, Spirit of, of Halloween, Halloween costume stores or other just kind of seasonal stores. So uh, this guy, never available in Canada, only in the States. And the differences, uh, in addition to the figure differences, the packaging is really spectacular. It's this shiny bronze metallic look to it. Got some silver on the side there. And nice picture of the Mandalorian on the back. Let's crack this box open. There's a nice little hook there. Even though it does come in a box, resealable box, it does have this hook if you want to hang it on a wall. And comes in a nice clamshell. I believe there's some paperwork here, but it's probably just legalese. Yeah, legal mumbo jumbo warnings. Um, I'll get to the warning in a second. That actual, actually, that warning is uh, very important because um, there is a feature with this figure that if you're not careful. Um, could end in disaster. So here is the uh, Mandalorian special carbonized version. And took a quick look at him in the unboxing, but we'll take a more thorough look at him here. Pop him out here. One thing you want to watch while you're pulling him out is that the cape is fed through a hole here which is nice so that the cape isn't, uh, the figure isn't pressing on the cape in, in the packaging, which would distort, warp the cape. So it does hang out the back. And he comes with two weapons. And sometimes it's nice when there aren't tons and tons and tons of weapons in a package. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love lots of accessories, but whenever I see just two, it it makes the ones that you got more special. So he comes with this thing. Be careful. This is the uh, disintegrator rifle. And he also comes with a pistola. This uh, kind of western looking blaster with a brown handle on it. Nice silver metallic paint. It totally looks like an old western revolver. I like the look of that. And since the Mandalorian show pays homage to all Star Wars, uh, this is actually right out of that um, holiday special that they did, the, uh, the much maligned infamous holiday special. And I think it's a great lesson that shows you that even the worst 
possible thing has some good that comes out of it. And that animated short that came out of that holiday special with Boba Fett is actually the introduction of Boba Fett into the Star Wars galaxy. Uh, Boba has this rifle. And everybody remembers that line in Empire Strikes Back when Vader is warning Boba Fett, no disintegrations. Well, in The Mandalorian, we finally get to see what that is all about. So you can actually store the rifle on the Mandalorian's back. He has a hole in his back here and the belt, uh, the shoulder strap that goes over the belt uh, can be made to go over the hole. So you might have to adjust this belt a little bit in case this is riding a little high like a mine is right now. All you have to do is just pull this belt down a little bit to shimmy this up a bit to readjust and you can get it perfectly centered that way. If it's not perfectly centered then it can be a little tricky to feed through there. Just push it in there, apply a little bit of force and the Mandalorian has his rifle on his back. You can tuck this cape in behind and now you can display it on his back while he's standing on your shelf. Uh, you don't have to just have it laying on his feet or having him hold it constantly in his hand. The pistol has a little holster on the side here, which feeds in through the top. And there's a hole on the bottom, so you don't have to worry about... Sometimes you can bend um, the tips. I've seen that a lot in the anniversary G.I. Joe figures where the guns don't quite go all the way. And if it's a really small, fragile tip, you can bend it. But this just goes right through. And there is a, uh, a little strap there with a peg and it's nice, flexible rubber. Doesn't feel like it's gonna break. I've had some NECA and McFarlane figures with these types of holsters and they'll tear. Um, Rambo Force of Freedom uh, uh, has that uh, very fragile rubbery material but this this looks fine this doesn't look like it's gonna tear off it, it doesn't plug in there tight so tightly that it'll tear when you pull it out and you can pull that out and have him draw his finger is in a trigger pull position for both the pistol the blaster sorry as well as the uh, disintegrating rifle and I love when you can get it to do this. Hard to do for the anniversary Joes sometimes that have the trigger finger, but in the six inch scale, a lot easier to do. You can feed the trigger finger into the trigger spot. That looks so awesome. This is the advantage of the six inch scale. Just these little tiny tweaks that you can do for posing to get a much more natural looking pose than a, a three and three quarter or a four inch figure can get. Um, and that is, that is just about approaching 12 inch figure level, like Hot Toys level of natural looking poseability. That's really, really impressive to me. This uh, rifle does tend to pop out Uh, just when you're futzing around with him, but I haven't had it pop out when he's been sitting on a shelf. Look at this pose. Let's give this particular pose a 360 while I've got him looking like this. And that's what it's all about right there. That's what the six inch scale is all about for me. That is dynamic, natural, looks like a little like maquette miniature model instead of a toy. This is toy artistry. Beautiful work, beautiful sculpt, beautiful paint job. But when you get the posability that is just that good, that much range and it holds, it's not floppy. That just makes it a magnificent figure. So let's put the pistol away. And let's try the uh, disintegrator. See how tricky that might be. So it also has a loop. And this might be a little trickier because it, it 
doesn't have like a typical gun handle. You have to just feed it through there like that. Oh, pop it through there and that works. Two-handed weapon, so he would have to grip it with his other hand. The other hand does not have a trigger finger, uh, which it, I don't think it should. He should only be firing one of these weapons at a time since the rifle is a uh, two-handed uh, rifle. So I'll get to all the posability in a second, but while I'm posing this rifle, I just want to point out the amazing articulation in the wrists. It It's smart. It makes sense. This wrist goes up and down. This wrist does not go up and down. It's not symmetrical. This one goes in and out. That's as it should be for the poses you want to achieve with this particular figure. If now, this hand was the same as this hand and it was an up and down wrist you wouldn't have as much range for gripping the rifle as he does so smart very smart well thought out i don't know if it's a little extra work or production costs to do that but in terms of having a figure that has fantastic posability That is the, uh, that's the pose you want when he's firing this rifle. So sometimes when figures are, are shooting at a particular thing, G.I. Joes are guilty of this. They can't quite get their head to where they're shooting. I'm thinking of Low Light, the sniper, who sometimes it's hard to get him to shoot the sniper rifle and have the scope kind of lined up with his eye and have the, right, uh, the rifle barrel lined up with his head. But this works perfectly well. And you do want to be careful with this guy because it is a disintegrator. Now, you can use that to your advantage uh, if there are maybe certain pieces of your collection that you're, you've grown tired of and you just want to get rid of it. You don't want to throw it in the garbage. Let's say wheelie, for example. You're just tired of looking at wheelie, so you can set up the target right here, and you just give this push. Disintegrated. Or if someone's trying to make you eat your vegetables, you can just set your vegetables up there. Once again, be careful with the tip there and push the end and the vegetables are all gone although it's much more nutritious to eat your vegetables so definitely make sure vegetables are a part of every meal all right let's take a look at his articulation pop this rifle out you always want to be careful when you're removing weapons not just for the uh, thumb and the finger I find the wrist part breaks, especially on 25th anniversary G.I. Joes. That's the part that usually breaks when I'm removing weapons. So, always gotta be mindful of that wrist. Head articulation is really, really good. He's got side to side. He's got like a slight tilt, which is really, really important for a guy who can't take his mask off. Um, he acts a lot on the show despite us not being able to see his face and the way he does that is with subtlety kind of slight tilts uh, so it's nice that the neck has the same range of motion he does in the show lots of down range a little bit of up range and check this out this is like a double you know how they're double jointed knees it's like a double jointed head it can go it can go up and down but it can also go independent of the neck, it feels like. I do a little bit of a head juke. That's cool. Shoulder range is fantastic, except for on one side, the uh, cape impedes it a little bit, but because it's not attached, it's just loose on there. And I guess you could pop it off if you popped his head off. I'm not gonna try though. Um, because it's not attached to his shoulders or his neck, it's easily moved out of the way. In fact, you can move it out of the way so much that you can get a 360 even on the shoulder that uh, has the cape going over it. 
He is wearing the outfit from the beginning of the show without any of the um, upgrades, the Beskar steel upgrades. But uh, the cape is spectacular. When the light hits it, um, I was going to say when it, when it hits it just right, but the light doesn't have to hit it just right. The light just needs to hit it. It is really shiny. Really awesome in any light. Really fantastic. I uh, got this bronze metallic paint job all over. Even in uh, this cloth part, the uh, pants. Even this has like a very, very slight... Uh, maybe not. Maybe maybe very slight. Not on the shoes. Um, so in addition to 360 arms, quite a bit of range actually on the shoulders too. Impeded by the shoulder uh, armor a bit. It kind of moves too. So it it allows for a lot more posability than this figure should have. Just the way it's put together and designed. Very smartly done. 360 on the elbow. And there's enough range. I mean, it's that's how much range a human elbow has. So it's perfect. And then the wrist can do a 360. Always be careful when you're playing with the wrists. Because like I said, that's the part that always breaks on me. So it, I'm feeling a little resistance in there. So I'm not going to try a 360. But you got that great range in the wrist on the one hand. And then on the other hand, he's got that He-Man power of Grayskull hand. So he can, if he had a sword, he'd be able to hold the uh, sword aloft. Can't do that unless you have that wrist tilt. So that's the upper body. Well, that's the arms. The uh, There is a um, like a torso twist. And quite a bit of range in there too, up and down, left and right. And I don't believe there is anything in there in the, uh, that's the only spot that he does bend in his torso. And then with the legs, can he do the splits? Almost, he shouldn't be able to anyway. Um, this armor right here on the sides does get in the way it looks like but fantastic range as range as as much range as a, a person should have and let's see if we can balance this so that he can stand on one foot it's a little tricky but i feel like it should be able to there we go it's a little tricky but he can stand on one foot given the old spartan boot to somebody and then the knees are double jointed so you can bend there but then you can bend at the second part oh yeah give him the uh, V trigger knee really nice and the ankle has fantastic uh, pivot to the side which allows him to get those wide-legged stances that, not so good, but just being able to do that makes him much more stable and makes him look so much more better in those wide-legged stances. And then the feet, in addition to having those side-to-side -side pivots, can go quite a bit. That's a lot. Very nice. I, uh, I rarely see a figure with that much forward. Uh, range in the ankle and back as well so I've dealt with Masters of the Universe classics enough to really kind of dread when I see this type of articulation because it works so poorly on a lot of the classics it's so loose but these are really really nice and tight wonderfully designed figure both aesthetically as well as from a, from an actual uh, technical engineering standpoint like it they pulled it off without a hitch this thing is fantastic and the one thing that i'm sure a lot of fans are clamoring for that'll really make him look complete is a baby yoda uh, although there isn't much baby yoda merchandise you can improvise and give him 
a full-grown Yoda, or if you think a full-grown Yoda doesn't really cut it uh, for a baby Yoda stand-in, and you want something a little bit cuter, maybe you could use this little green guy, like a rainbow connection, or maybe you got one of these little guys almost as cute as baby Yoda and uh, if the Mandalorian gives him a sock I guess that makes him free. He does have a little bit of trouble when he's just standing <clears throat> perfectly upright in like a regular boring pose. Feels like he he tends to want to um, fall backward. You sort of have to position the feet a little bit apart, either one backwards, or or like a split-legged stance. It feels like he really wants to go into that spaghetti western split-legged stance. And in case you're curious, he does have holes in the bottom, too small for a GI Joe stand, a uh, vintage GI Joe stand, uh, and too big for a 25th anniversary stand. So the hole is somewhere in between. G.I. Joe 25th holes and vintage holes. And a size comparison with a smaller Star Wars figure. It's a Power of the Force 2 Boba Fett. Don't they look good together? So much more detail, so much more posability possible in the larger figure. Really, really awesome job. Um, obviously, these little guys will always have a lot of nostalgia, but... They start to look very simple when you put them side by side with one of these really highly posable, super detailed uh, six inch Star Wars figures. I was trying to turn, ah, oh, there's one articulation point I forgot about, the thigh. There is a twist in the thigh, which will allow him to turn his back leg like so in order to make it a little more steady kind of looking like a yoga pose there or your one or two i forget which one thank you to all the members of the patreon tribe a warm welcome to new members robert gillis and daniel crocker and a bow of appreciation to the original members of the patreon tribe who are still there scott orr nicholas stephen shane o martin day michael proctor luke wiltshire ricky ray Chris Lippincott, and ZZ Funk. I think a big part of what the Patreon tribe has become is because of you folks. Without support and encouragement, things just tend to die on the vine. And I wasn't sure about this whole Patreon thing when I started it, but your support, positivity, and enthusiasm made me realize it could be more than just crowdfunding. It could be an optimistic community. No, a family. Good brothers and sisters. I'd like to do something special for you guys for being around since the beginning, so if you're interested, I'd love to have you on Toy Guys Talking. Hit me up on Patreon if you're interested. Thanks everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed this review. As always, feel free to share, leave a thought in the comment spot, and to join the tribe, disintegrate, subscribe.